the great steppe, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch project called Enigma of the Great Steppe. When our great-grandfather realized that the world is deceitful, and that without sorrow there is no joy, he chose the universal language of music and composed the first cue. He carved the kobuz from a single piece of wood, and made the whole step groan. The swan was singing proudly, and a mother camel was calling for her baby. Having been swayed by it, death had missed several years. His life is surrounded by mysteries. Did he really exist? When was he born and why his never fading name is known to every inhabitant of the great steppe? Who gave him the instrument, which cries like the wind and sings like a mother to the cradle? The instrument which music could banish sickness and even stop death. Even his birth is a great mystery. How could an ordinary woman possibly be pregnant for three years and nine days? It is impossible. But let's think about it. Both three and nine are sacred numbers. When we were children, we used to hear these legends. The day when Kurkit was born, Karaspan Mountain was flooded with water. Black earth was covered with sand, and people were living in fear. After his birth, everyone has rejoiced. It was a verse from a poem that has survived to this day. The poem mentions Karaspan Mountain, located near modern-day Turkestan. There used to be a city called Karashik, right at the foot of the Karatau Mountains. Tribesmen decided to give him the name Korkut, for he had come to this world and frightened everyone while they were already living in fear. In such cases, people say that the baby is born with a shirt. From a medicinal standpoint, there is nothing mysterious about that. In rare cases, the birth membrane can cover a newborn's head and face. Why does the expression, out of the mouths of babes comes the truth, apply so strongly to Korkut? The legend says that the newborn started talking immediately after birth. He was granted the wisdom from above. All his life he carried this wisdom to his people. People still remember the covenants from the imperishable Book of Dede Korkut. The black tents to which no guest comes were better destroyed. Better that the bitter grass the horses will not eat did not grow. Better that the bitter water man will not drink did not well forth. Better that the loudest son who does not maintain the good name of his father should never come down from his father's loins. <laughs> Korkit lived during troubled times. Even our leading historians couldn't come to a single conclusion regarding Korkut, since nothing is clear. Some historians believe he lived between the 9th and 10th centuries, others claim that he lived in the 7th century. Maybe he lived even earlier than that. People living along the Sir Darya River and Kazakhs in general have a saying, don't cloud the dark sky. This and other expressions are used by both old and young people. They're based on Oguz and Kipchak's legends about Korkut. They prove the existence of a man named Korkut who lived in the Sir Darya River region. He was not only a saint and a clairvoyant, but also a founder of Kobuz.
There's another mystery, which is Kurkut's place of birth. In ancient times, this land around Sirdaraya River was known as the navel of the world. First manned spacecraft in human history was launched from precisely this location. According to scientists, this was chosen due to the shortest distance to low Earth orbit. It means that Korkut was predestined to have a close relationship with space. Another interesting fact is that none of the legends surrounding this man does mention anything about his mentor, which serves as another proof of his divine knowledge. Kurkut became a sage, respected elder and bard. Not a single serious dispute was resolved without his advice. Garifola Yassim writes that young and old folks, happy and sad ones, were seeking for his advice. As a result, they were getting much needed answers, deliverance from the ills of life, and also peace and quiet in their hearts. Korkut was an advisor to Oghuz ruler Inal Sir Yafku Khan, who reigned during the 9th century. There is some evidence indicating that he was a grand vizier. Ali Shir Naval wrote about a soothsayer named Korkut, who was predicting the future events. Yes, he had psychic abilities. Work by Abu al Hazi Bahadur Khan titled Genealogy of the Turkmen was finished in the 17th century. It says that Korkut was an Oghuz leader and lived for 295 years under the reign of five Khans. It is believed that people used to live longer in ancient times. I think that the average lifespan was about 100 years. Great philosopher lived for almost three centuries, while other sources imply that he could even be older than that. All this time he was trying to escape death by any means necessary. Some legends say that once during his sleep he received an omen from God, warning him that if he were to mention death, then he would die immediately. After that, Korkut swore that he would never speak of death and as a result would live a long life. Here's another version. As authors of Sir Darya books say, there is a legend about Korkut being very afraid of death and struggling all his life with it. According to this legend, he was visited by angels who told him that he would die from Karakut Bite. How is it possible that he lived for 300 years when the heaven's messenger gave him only 40 years to live? Korkut had spread his carpet over the Siradaria River and started living on the water. Since ancient times, people knew that venomous insects don't inhabit water areas. Majority of the tales state that while trying to escape death, Korkut saddled his camel, Jelmaya, and rode off in search of the promised land, Jir Uyuk, where people live forever. His path was long. He visited four parts of the world and everywhere he encountered the same picture. Everywhere he had encountered people, what were they doing? They were digging. When asked to explain what they were digging for, people answered that they were digging Korkut's grave. After visiting another corner of the world, he again encountered people who were digging a grave. What are you digging? We're digging Korkut's grave, was the answer. Then Korkut realized that there is no way to escape death. He returned to the coast of the Sirdaria River, spread the carpet, and started playing the kobuz. Bek Ibrayev, a prominent researcher, historian, one of the authors of the monument built over the grave belonging to the great seer, believes that Korkut's journey is more than just a chase after immortality. Maybe he didn't even pursue immortality, but tried to find his equal, one who was also possessed the divine knowledge. 
Just try to imagine how it must have been for him. He was loved, worshipped and idolized by many inhabitants of the Great Steppe. What more did he need? In the first place, he wasn't understood. This is a tragedy of all our poets, including Abai. Search for the meaning of life, desire to stay, if not on earth, but at least in memory of future generations, the goals which are usually attributed to extraordinary persons. I would go on to say that he was not just an akin, bard and storyteller. All these titles belong to folk genre. He was an epic poet, which is very close to a philosopher. He was a step version of Horace and Ovid. Korkut reflected on the impermanence of life. Like Aristotle, like Pushkin, who wrote, I've reared a monument not built by human hands. Or like Lermontov, who, as if anticipating death, wrote, Why do I feel so pained and troubled? Why do I harbor hope, regrets? Finally, like poet and philosopher Abai. Korkut had just one motif. All his poetry and nature are filled with tragicness. Korkut is the only poet who created a musical instrument through which he could convey the sense of great anguish. One of the sources says, cover the wooden instrument with camel leather and make the strings of horsehair. Oh my kobuz, your card from pine tree root. On my kobuz, you are hollowed out of maple. My kobuz, your resonator is made of the hide of a fast camel. My kobuz, your tailpiece is made of the horn of a wild goat. My kobuz, your strings are made of the tail hair of a five-year-old stallion. I will turn your pegs. If my dreams won't come true, I will smash you to the ground. With these words, he took the instrument in his hands and made its string with the voice of a mother camel that had lost her baby. Nature and all living things like running animals, flying birds and the blowing wind stopped and started listening to Korkut. Death, spellbound by its sound, had forgotten why it came for. Time had stopped and life prevailed for a while. There is another legend about Korkut's dream to make such musical instruments which could be used to be played every tune. It reminds us of Pavel Bashov's folk tales about Danila the craftsman, who also wanted to create miracles. They both couldn't do it without the help of magic powers. Danila had to see the mistress of the Copper Mountain, while Korkut had to overhear conversation between shaitans in order to learn his lesson. In order to make the kobuz first, he had to get a stem of wild olive, which had been broken by a wild boar. Then he cut a cavity in it and covered it with the skin of a noisy camel, and then made strings from a tail of a loud neighing horse. He anchored the strings with a dried pumpkin fragment and rubbed them with the Firula asafoetida plant gum. A question arises, who helped Korkut create the kobuz? Was it God or evil spirits? In any case, according to legend, it was Korkut who made the instrument. He put his soul into those melodies. Meantime, the magnificent sounds of his strings had already spread around the whole world. People were reached, captured and captivated by these sounds. Since then, the Korkut's kobuz and its tunes have been traveling around the globe. While his name has achieved immortality in people's hearts through the sound of kobuz. Towards the end of his life, Korkut returned to his native land. It was then that he was brought down by his own fatigue while playing the cue until his last breath, sitting on a carpet that was swaying over the Sirderia River. By the way, if he wasn't a saint, then why didn't the river swallow him along with his kobuz? In Europe, only Jesus Christ had the ability to walk on water. So did Korkut possess the gift of the Almighty, or was it just a myth?
Korkut wasn't a god. He fell asleep, dropping the magical instrument out of his hands. Another source, and there is another discrepancy. Was it a Karakurt that drove its toxic sting into the head of Baksi? Or was it a viper that brought him death? Does it really matter? Although according to the ancient Indian's myth, it is a snake that separates earth from heaven. According to later myths, serpents serve as the embodiment to the underworld. Not to mention its role in the Bible. One way or the other, Korkut's life has ended, but it only could be said regarding his early existence. As Abai said, even if a person dies, he leaves an immortal trace behind him. Korkut's greatness lies in his art. The Kazakhs consider him to be the father of both the first Zhir and the first Q. Shokan Valikhanov wrote the following about Korkut. Korkut was the first one to master the Kobuz. He was also the first Baksi. Meantime, Mukhtar Awezov noted that Korkut's Kobuz and his tunes had gone on a journey around the globe, though his name had achieved immortality in people's hearts through the sound of Kobuz. But he is better summed up by the people. Korkut can make even a bow produce sound. Kobuz is truly a cultural heritage of Kazakh people. The musical instrument is not less mysterious than its creator. There are kobuzes that are made of pines, birches, and even apple trees. Horsehair is strong from both ends of the wood. It must also be applied on the bow as well. This way, kobuz is made by putting all the pieces together. If everything turns out well, then the instrument has no equals. It is simple, and the simplicity of it is mysterious. It can cry like a human and whisper like a feather grass by the river. It can also sound like a stream and howl like the wind in the vast steppe. It was a new sound. Korkut created such a great instrument that became one of the main progenitors of violin. As for the violin, it has subsequently earned for itself the glory of being called the Queen of Instruments. Could it be that broaching sounds of the ancient steppe are the ones that are allowing the violin to touch the deepest strings of human soul? There is also another mystery regarding Kobuz. It is known that many nations, including Kazakhs, had their own shamans. Shamans knew a lot of things. For example, they could banish various sicknesses with the help of just sand, fire, knife, and mirrors. Most talented shamans use the kobuz. Since it is made of hair and leather, kobuzes are very natural. If you can play the kobuz, it can cause a healing effect on you. Kobuz was being used to cure some sicknesses much more effectively than fire and a knife. Korkut was one of those healers. Kazakh people believe that Tuktibai and our contemporaries like Jacques Bas Kalambayev and Daulet Mukutibayev were also the shamans. Indeed, they were not ordinary men. In order to play the kobuz so masterfully, one has to have a special gift. I believe that kobuz remains the only instrument that has been preserved in its original form, because it is carved from wood and strung with horsehair. It is of great interest to us today in its original form. It can be used to play a vast array of music, and it has many secrets. One of the stories tells us that kobuz, which was used by shamans, was modified by addition of a piece of mirror in it. The first mention of a glass mirror dates back to 1279, when the Roman Catholic Archbishop, John Peckham, described the method of coating glass with a thin layer of tin. Then, how did the glass mirror turn up in the Great Steppe during the 9th century? Either it was made not of glass, or this is just another question that remains unanswered.
How many coups did Korkut compose? Great Step is holding this mystery. Only a few dozen have survived through the centuries, while only 11 of them have been recorded. Even the remaining number is invaluable to us. They are like an autobiography. There's also a book left. Azerbaijani writer Anar Razaev said the following, Turkic peoples didn't have playwrights like Shakespeare, or novelists like Tolstoy and Dostoevsky, but neither Russians nor Englishmen have an epos that could rival in its scope, artistic merit and significance with the book of Dede Korkut. This ideological spectrum could raise our notion of the eternity, hereafter and cosmos to a completely new level. Maybe such a long lifespan of a poet, philosopher and soothsayer originated in legends only because it is impossible for mere mortal to grasp the immensity of the universe in one lifetime. Наследие таких наших предков, как Коркутата и Legacy of our ancestors such as Korkut Ata, Asan Kaigi, and many others lie in the fact that they gave mankind an opportunity to know its place in the universe. All the quests that happen in our life are actually occurring in the space-time of our universe. Поиски не происходили, они происходят в пространстве Вселенной, в пространстве, где позволено находиться человеку и человеческому разуму. Thousand pages have been written down and hundreds of works have been dedicated to Korkut and his art. It would seem that every single word regarding this singer and soothsayer has been carefully studied. The questions still remain. В определении наследия Корхыта до сих пор существуют споры. There are still many debates and discussions over his legacy. Some historians consider that his main legacy is Kolbuz, while others tend to emphasize the book of Dede Korkut, which contains the epic stories by Korkut. In general, his body of work is part of the cultural heritage of all Turkic countries. Hence, there are different approaches to the study of his legacy. Поэтому в современном мире the past reluctantly parts with the invaluable cleanings by passing them only to those who spare neither effort nor time to get what they need. Yes, there are no limits for them, for they are just like Korkut. During this year's UNESCO meeting in Ethiopia was proposed to create a special prize honoring outstanding contributions to culture. The prize was supposed to be named after Korkut and was to be given on behalf of Kazakhstan as well as other Turkic countries. Korkut lives in people's memory. He lives through his music. In a place where he found peace, the wind continues to sing an endless song as if the eternity itself plays the music of the great step. Isn't this the immortality which Korkut dreamt of? <laughs>